decided right there that I would help bring his wonderful talk to a wider audience. Dr. Salty has been a full-time lecturer of Arabic here at Stanford since 1998, and he also has a great blog called Arabology, as well as a weekly radio program with the same name on Stanford's radio, pro um, radio show KZSU, and it's Thursdays 3 to 5. The reason I'm telling you this is I know that after his talk, you will definitely want to tune into that. So without further ado, the wonderful Dr. Salty. So, salam, shalom, bonjour, buongiorno, uh, merhaba, Turkish, right? And thank you all for coming to this uh, thing tonight. Um, Julia is, I don't have to tell you, if you don't know Julia, you should. She's the most amazing young lady in the world. And uh, she came up to me, actually, after I had been... Uh, uh, a guest uh, lecturer for a course on representations of the Jew in Arabic literature and vice versa. And uh, I was invited to kind of show representations of, uh, uh, you know, Arabs in Israeli literature and music. And uh, I don't know, I just, I remember we moved classrooms, Julia, right? From yeah. one classroom to another, and uh, on the way I said, what is your name, young lady? And she said, Julia Turan. And next thing I know, I'm being invited to do this thing. And I'm very, very happy because music for me has been an integral part of my life. And after teaching at Stanford for over 10 years, I decided, you know, is that it? Like, it's a great job and everything, but, you know, is that what I'm going to do till I retire? Uh, and then I, and then the radio came my way. And thank God for the radio, KZSU, 90.1 FM is your radio station, 90.1, and we stream also. And they invited me to be on a show, and then I got my own show, and uh, it's called Arabology, it's on Thursdays, 4 to 6. And the idea behind this show is to show how music can bring so many uh, sides together. It seems to me like if you listen to a song and you like it, it doesn't matter if it's in Hebrew, if it's in Arabic, if it's in English, uh, you kind of connect with the melody. And very quickly, I think you learn that a lot of uh, songs you know, recorded and sung in Hebrew sound very much like Arabic especially to Americans who speak neither. So I think that that's, I think that that's a really good point to make is if the music sounds the same, and in Arabic, the word for Arabic is Arabi, and the word for Hebrew is Ebri, so it's really two letters difference. You switch the B and the R and you end up with the same word. That to me is significant. And I have to say also that in my classes here at Stanford where I teach Arabic, uh, at different levels, I've always, always felt very proud and, uh, um, you know, it filled my heart to know that I had kids who were of all religions and backgrounds sitting together learning Arabic. So I've got, you know, Jewish students, Muslim students, Christian students, and everything else. And sometimes some of these students uh, don't interact or hadn't interacted before, especially if they're foreign students, because as you know, one of the sad realities of living in the Middle East is that many countries are not allowed interactions with other countries. So, so you know, Lebanese musicians can't perform in Israel, and Israeli musicians can't perform in Lebanon, let's say. And it's due to the you know, government uh, policies. But once you get beyond that, you, my gosh, like this group I'm going to talk about tonight at the end of the presentation named Mashru Alayla, if you look at their YouTube page, you're going to find people from Israel, from all over the Arab world, sort of all going together like, we're like brothers, we should be singing in unison, you know. So I'm not attempting to simplify a very, you know, complex issue, and nor do I want my talk to be political today. But I wanted to say that through music, we're going to look at representations of the other today. We're going to see how Arabic music not only has evolved, but 
but also how it has tended to represent the other. The other could be the Jew, it could be women, it could be dealing with issues that were hushed up uh, a few years ago, and then kind of have this like uh, drum roll moment where afterwards we'll, we'll look at the music that came out of the revolutions going on in the Arab world, what I like to call the, the soundtrack to the Arab Spring. And the Arab Spring, in my opinion, would not have happened if it weren't for music. And I'm going to show you why I'm saying that by looking at some of the amazing music that fueled the revolutions. Um, and one last thing about the revolutions is that I don't believe that they're over. And I don't believe that the current state of affairs in uh, Tunisia or Egypt or Libya or other places is the way it's going to end up. I think it's going to evolve into a much better place. Uh, inshallah. So uh, I'm going to try to do my own uh, technical, uh, because I didn't want Eric over here to have to stand and do this. I'm going to try to, to, to multitask Eric, but if I can't, you're going to have to kind of come help me out. Uh, so, and, and I think this YouTube thing helped me, Mahta, but if we get a commercial, like, I can't control it. Suddenly, like, we're listening to beautiful music, and they're like, get a mail order ride. If that happens, Mahta, you like, take your mind away from it, I'll mute it quickly or something. So I'm going to use strictly YouTube videos. And uh, if I were to play these 30 videos in their entirety, it would be a three-hour lecture. I'm only going to play, uh, like, sometimes 10 seconds from a clip. If you like it, you have a, a sheet here that has the names of the musicians. You can Google them yourself or go to YouTube um, and uh, find out more about them, because there's an amazing array of musicians coming out of the Arab world specifically. So if we look at uh, Arabic music, the one I grew up with in the 60s and 70s, uh, it was, you know, it was kind of like uh, classical um, pieces. Uh, that sometimes, the average song, I remember, you know, from my dad telling me the average length of a song by someone like Um Kulthum, who I'll talk about very briefly in a second, is 60 minutes. <laughs> One song, 60 minutes. So you had, you know, an orchestra that would start and the audience would, you know, clap and suddenly this very grand uh, lady would step on stage, her name is and uh, she would start singing. She had what they called a larynx of gold. The, she could sing for hours and hours and hours. And uh, she comes from Egypt. So she would start singing like one verse, and it would be very difficult Arabic poetry, but very poignant. And then by the time she finished the verse, everybody would just start, oh, you know, clapping and, and shouting, and people were known to faint you know, from one verse. So of course she would have to stop. 911 would be called. And then, and then she would say the verse again. This time you'd get another one. So if each verse she says would be like 10 minutes to deliver, a poem would take an hour, you know, or more. And so she, she's an amazing woman, and I, if you like this kind of Arabic music, the music I grew up with and maybe didn't appreciate as a kid, because it sounded to me like it was all like, ah, now uh, it's the kind of music that saves my life when I'm depressed or I need a perk. So Um Kulthum, who apparently is said is a direct descendant of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is is amazing not only in the fact that she made she made it on her own as a woman in uh, Egypt and in the Arab world, but also because you know in her private life she never really married. There's a slight exception there, but I won't go there. But it was like she she was a single woman who had more power and influence over the Arab world in terms of politics through her music than some of the presidents themselves. Uh, so she has a fascinating life, and uh, I'm going to, to show you a clip from um, uh, one of her most famous songs called uh, Al Atlal. And uh, from Al Atlal, which means the ruins, you're going to kind of get an idea what her singing is like. 
if you get bored and you're like, what is this? Why did I come here to listen to this lady go on? <laughs> you probably just need to be seasoned a bit, but it's gonna get like like better, <laughs> all right? <laughs> so we'll begin with her singing Al Atlal, and I found a version that had the English subtitles so that you can um, actually know what she's moaning and groaning about. <laughs> Amen. 